Thank you all for joining us at this early hour. You know, when you put on a, uh, a gathering like this that has global aspirations, you really work hard to try to make sure it's, it's international. And that means that someone's got to put a lot of effort into uh, uh, identifying a region, uh, recruiting the speakers, uh, and building the whole content. So we're very grateful to have this uh, very much on topic panel. And Dr. Calvin McRae is going to come up here and uh, formally introduce our moderator. Chris, thank you very much. Well, one of the things we've known for a long time is that there are unique um, biological and market sensibilities in the Japanese market, and uh, particularly in cardiometabolic disease. It's been an area of deep interest, and we're greatly honored to have such an illustrious panel uh, join us uh, this morning uh, to really put that in perspective. I'm going to introduce uh, the moderator, who's then going to introduce the, the panel. Mo uh, moderator for today's session is uh, uh, Professor Masanori Ayakawa. Uh, he himself is a director of a unique uh, academic industrial collaboration, the Center for Interdisciplinary Cardiovascular Sciences at Brigham, Women Hos Brigham and Women's Hospital, uh, really a pioneering effort to try and bring industry uh, and academia together. Masanori, welcome, and welcome to the panel, and thank you all for coming. Thank you, Carm. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, in this uh, special focus session, uh, we are hoping to help you gain a deeper understanding of the following aspect. Um, what are the uh, unique trends of patients with cardiometabolic disorders in Japan? And what are the major opportunities in Japan for non-Japanese uh, corporates. Conversely, what opportunities Japanese pharmaceutical companies are exploring in the US? So we also wish to talk about uh, innovative models that have been established in Japan to speed the development of new therapies. We have been able to assemble the powerful panel for this special session. Uh, now i like uh, each of you to introduce yourself and talk about the focus of your organization's programs. Uh, next to me is Dr. Anna Kastenbrun. Uh, would you please introduce yourself and what your organization's uh, efforts are in cardiometabolic space? That's the, all the Japanese I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, try on you this morning. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm Carsten Brunn, I'm the, the president of the Americas region for Bayer Pharmaceuticals, uh, responsible for the US, Canada, and Latin America. But the reason you're wondering why I'm up here, I used to be the president of Bayer Healthcare in Japan for the past four years, actually. Um, I was also the chairman of FPA Japan, the European Industry Association in Japan. Um, and uh, as I said, I've lived in, in Japan for four years and I got to uh, appreciate and respect Japanese culture and it's a pleasure to be here um, today. Now talk about Bayer, we have uh, quite a long history uh, in, in cardiovascular disease. Um, uh, you know, mature brands, uh, Aspirin Cardio, Adalat, Glucobay, um, but we still have a major research focus on cardiovascular and specifically two areas, um, which I think are very relevant for Japan, which is uh, heart failure and kidney disease. And as you know, Japan has uh, the most age and fastest aging population in the world with uh, I think it's about 26% now above 65 years of age. Um, so I think it's a very relevant um, therapies. Um, and I will go into detail which compounds we have, but we have a number of compounds also actually one specifically uh, for Japan in real anemia, actually. So, so a long commitment in, in cardiovascular. Um, we also have a long history in Japan um, as a company, over a hundred years. Um, and uh, we're currently ranked among the uh, top 10. And uh, actually, what is interesting uh, and what I'm proud of is that we were one of the first companies to open an open innovation center in Japan in 2014. And I'll talk about this a bit later, and I think that's a unique opportunity that Japan has to offer in terms of uh, innovation. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next to Dr. Brun is uh, Mr. Hiroyuki Kawabata. You know, would you please introduce yourself and your organization, and also what your organization does to promote 
uh, partnership between Japan and other countries, particularly the United States. Okay, so uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Hiroyuki Kawabata, uh, Director of Health, Welfare and, uh, at JETRO New York. So JETRO is a Japan external trade organization uh, that's uh, called JETRO. The JETRO is a uh, you know, uh, non-profit public government organization supervised by the Minister of Commerce, uh, government of Japan. And uh, oh, before I joined to, uh, JETRO on September 2014, I worked for uh, Minister of Health for about uh, 15 years, and uh, where I have engaged in uh, various lot of uh, policy making fields, uh, such like uh, making uh, so you know uh, healthcare industries uh, growth strategy, and also uh, making a new uh, regulation act for the in healthcare industry. And uh, one of the my mission at JETRO New York is to making uh, you know, the Japanese healthcare market more attractive for healthcare industry and also uh, creating the mutual understanding between uh, two countries, you know, US and uh, Japan. So uh, because when we look at the each country's uh, situation surrounding the healthcare industry. So we can find the two biggest developed company which have the huge patient needs in cardiovascular disease area. So those are Japan and US. So I believe uh, the stronger collaboration between uh, you know, uh, Japan and uh, US uh, makes the R&D environment more efficient. So when we look at the public sector's collaboration opportunities, so uh, along with the globalization, uh, around the uh, opportunity between two countries, public sector is uh, now so growing in increasingly. So uh, for example, the National Institute of Cerebral and uh, Cardiovascular Center is uh, one of the uh, national uh, institute in Japan uh, have cre created the you know uh, new networking platform for researchers from all over the world, including NIH researchers, and that are uh, also uh, conducting uh, clinical research for especially uh, stroke disease area. And uh, this so institutes will look be located to the uh, new facilities at the Osaka area and. Uh, uh, so where they uh, bring the new innovation, so international concept to th that uh, facilities. And uh, in the future, this uh, institute will uh, be become uh, you know, inter center of the international <coughs> clusters in cardiovascular disease fields. So uh, in order to promote collaboration so more and more, so my so organization, JETRO, is uh, conducting the various uh, support service to healthcare industry. So such like uh, we are doing a daily discussion and daily dialogue with each companies to find out the each you know, uh, uh, solutions for comp company and also uh, give uh, uh, information, healthcare information, such like uh, uh, healthcare, so IT trend, or uh, uh, cutting edge medical treatment uh, trend, uh, medical treatment area, and also the important thing is we are providing the healthcare system information, like uh, regulation, or pricing trend, or funding, and uh, sometimes, uh, so political argument, in United States and uh, uh, Japan, so like, uh, so what with the uh, Obamacare uh, will going on, something like that. So, and uh, also I uh, making a collaboration opportunity uh, by myself in JETRO and support to the uh, other organization where they are trying to make uh, opportunity to uh, both two countries. So by the way, uh, so you know, our cardiovascular disease field, especially uh, r and field, is uh, now very exciting at rapid speed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Next to uh, Mr. Kabata is Dr. Makoto Suematsu, uh, who represents, who actually directs the new agency in, in Japan, uh, which I believe is uh, equivalent to NIH in the United States. Uh, would you please introduce yourself and uh, the background okay. and mission <clears throat> of your agency? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm Makoto Suematsu, and uh, as he mentioned, uh, we started up a funding agency uh, two years ago. Unfortunately, our birthday is uh, April Fool. Actually, <laughs> the funding size is uh, just a 5% of the whole budget of NIH. It's a baby, and uh, two years old, and still having a diaper. <laughs> so, uh, the mission of uh, our organization is to fast track medical R&D in Japan, because before AMED, Maybe you might know there are three very complicated ministry and bureaucrat systems, and they are using a Japanese currency, but with a different <coughs> rule of funding. That is, it's a kind of a mixture of the uh, three different team sports, basketball, football, baseball, in the same ground. That is crazy. <laughs> and uh, uh, I completed the just a rule becomes one right now within the first one year. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, collaborate uh, with NIH and the other uh, uh, countries under the MOC. And actually, the such MOC uh, seems very helpful for us to facilitate the data sharing. So, uh, and also, uh, I would like to speak uh, more and more, but I would like to stop here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep. The fourth member of uh, today's panel is uh, Mr. You know, Eiji Tanaka. So would you please introduce yourself uh, and also uh, talk about uh, the focus of uh, your organization's you know, uh, programs in cardiometabolic space? Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Eiji Tanaka. Uh, I'm a president of Mitsubishi Tanabe Holdings America. And I'm responsible for the U.S. Uh, operations here in U.S. and uh, also the global business development of uh, Mitsubishi Tanabe Pharma Corporation. It's our parent company. So I think it is quite old story, but uh, I believe some of you know that from the cardiovascular disease point of view, uh, we Mitsubishi Tanabe is the originator of a uh, uh, old calcium, calcium channel broker, uh, Dilutiazem. And also, uh, we are distributing uh, ACE inhibitor uh, in Midapril uh, in Japan. And in terms of a uh, cardiovascular metabolic uh, point of view, uh, we are also uh, the originator of uh, SGLT2 inhibitor, which is now uh, marketing, distributing by Jonathan Johnson as a uh, first in class here uh, in US. And we are also, actually we and they are also conducting uh, for the line extension purpose, uh, such as a uh, uh, diabetic nephropathy or type one diabetes, or even the uh, 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 obesity. S and uh, in addition, uh, we had uh, developed uh, DPP4 inhibitor in Japan, and we are now developing uh, the combination product of those SDLT2 inhibitor and DPP4 inhibitor. But Further, in addition to that, uh, we are also distributing uh, the treatment for the complication, uh, like a chronic kidney disease. We are distributing uh, clomidin, that is a uh, uremic uh, toxin absorbance. So thus, uh, our goal is to offer the full range uh, of uh, pharmaceuticals uh, which treat uh, not only cardiovascular, uh, cardiometabolic related disease, but also the, the complications. So actually, uh, this year is the second year of our midterm uh, corporate uh, management uh, plan, 16 to 6 to 20. But cardiometabolic area is one of the most uh, important uh, area, especially from a uh, uh, marketing point of view. And regarding the opportunity here in the U.S., uh, actually the, the topics is a, a bit different, but uh, about 10 years ago, uh, we established uh, corporate and venture capital uh, here in Boston. And uh, I hope you know the name, but uh, the name of the uh, corporate venture capital is MP Healthcare Venture Management Inc., uh, headed by uh, Jeff Moore. 
And uh, once again, this is not the, uh, today's topics, but uh, through the uh, investment into the startup ventures, uh, fortunately, uh, we could uh, uh, experience uh, quite uh, successful uh, <coughs> examples through the such uh, strategic uh, investment. Uh, in addition, uh, about two years ago, to expand the scope of uh, collaboration, uh, collaboration with academia, uh, we decided to send up uh, two researchers in West Coast and uh, three researchers uh, here in uh, 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 East Coast. So their mission is to knock the door of the academia and explain who we are and uh, to know what are they doing and finally to find out the uh, best uh, scheme or a type of collaboration in which the both parties uh, could bring uh, their own edge for the complementary purpose or even the uh, uh, strengthen uh, their edge each other. And I hope that uh, in, in a short time period uh, we could uh, uh, succeed in that kind of, uh, kind of trial uh, models here uh, in the US. And one of the most um, attractive uh, circ circ circumstances uh, or situation here in the US is the uh, uh, ecosystem, so-called ecosystem. Uh, once we have a kind of idea, it is quite easy for us to make any kind of access uh, to any kind of resources at any time without any uh, hard or difficulties. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Japan is a rapidly aging country. Uh, in addition, uh, while the traditional Japanese food represents the healthy diet, the Western diet has been spreading through Japan in the past uh, few decades or so. Now, I like to ask um, Mr. Kawabata a couple of questions. Now, uh, what are the unique trends in Japan uh, in cardiometabolic diseases? And also, uh, what is the national uh, focus or national priority in Japan? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Aikawa. So uh, I will talk about Japanese situation. So uh, Japan is the highest country in terms of average life expectancy. At the same time, the Japan leads the world in aging population and decreasing birth rate. So currently, the 25% of the population is uh, over 60, uh, over 65 years old. And uh, this uh, number we reached to 40% uh, by 2040, we estimated. And uh, so uh, now we are facing a super aging society in Japan. And uh, this, such a situation will uh, influence a big, big impact to uh, population demographics and uh, disease structure as well. And uh, also arise the uh, big concern to uh, you know, uh, sustainable social security system. So from the statics point of view, the cancer is the leading uh, cause of death in Japan and uh, followed by uh, cardiovascular disease. But if we so focus on uh, six, over 65 years old range, the, its order is changes. The cardiovascular disease is the number one death of course. And so also, the, it's a so important thing. And second important uh, trend in Japan is uh, uh, death rate of uh, stroke mm -hmm. disease. So uh, actually, the st stroke uh, uh, cause of death is uh, much higher than US. So uh, spe uh, you know, specifically uh, twice higher than those of uh, United States. And so the reason is maybe uh, read from the, so there are a number <coughs> of uh, Japanese people with a uh, uh, patient with uh, high blood pressure uh, people. And, and so, I, believe, I, I guess, so I don't have a specific data on the future statics, but the so number of uh, cardiovascular disease patients will increase even if the, so, you know, uh, death rate uh, increasing because the, 
aging population is uh, so rapidly uh, increasing. And so in Japan, a uh, dietary shift from uh, Japanese traditional food to uh, westernized food uh, is uh, playing a major role in increase of cancer and the high blood pressure and obesity. So in this significant change of uh, lifestyle and uh, social uh, living in Japan, uh, Japanese government is trying to accomplish the harmon harmonious environment. So in order to do that, the Japanese government uh, is trying to uh, you know, uh, so improve the well-being of the general public and also uh, ensure the sustainable social security system. So in order to accomplish the, that uh, society, the Japanese government made, uh, created a national plan called 20, uh, sorry, uh, Healthy Japan 21st Century. It's a so 10 years government national plan. And one of the goal of the national plan is decrease the cardiovascular disease death rate. So, uh, <clears throat> so in, in order to accomplish that, so uh, central government or local government or medical association and uh, uh, so industry and also uh, so general public is joining a task force to prevent the cause of uh, cardiovascular disease like uh, blood pressure and uh, dyslipidemia and also uh, smoking and uh, diabetes by promoting healthy eating or healthy drinking and uh, exercise. And uh, also important thing is uh, so taking uh, so anti-hypertensive drug. <coughs> so it is very important for Japan to change the li lifestyle, life custom, but also in, it is important to access the innovative drug for treatment of high blood pressure and uh, uh, so uh, treatment for this epidemia. Thank you. Thank you. Now I like to I like to ask to talk about uh, uh, new paradigms to speed the development of new therapies uh, for cardiovascular diseases. Uh, if I'm allowed to share with you the painful uh, experience uh, in in my lab, uh, we have been trying to translate our own basic science discoveries on the role of NAT signaling pathway into the clinic uh, in the forms of uh, <coughs> potential new anti-inflammatory therapies for cardiovascular problems such as vein graft failure. But uh, this journey has been extremely challenging. You know, we are all uh, aware that, that there's a huge gap between academic uh, target discovery research and the development of effective therapies. So now uh, I'd like to ask the panelists to talk about uh, uh, new models that have been established in Japan to facilitate the development of new therapies. Um, first, I'd like to ask Dr. Suematsu to talk about the AMED effort, uh, for example, to promote cross-sector collaborations or you uh, innovative funding mechanism for uh, translational research. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to focus on uh, one project, uh, which started up from, again, from the April Fool this year. Uh, that is called CYCLE, H-C-I-C-L-E. -E. Uh, that is a, a cyclic innovation for clinical empowerment, the CYCLE. And this aimed to uh, stimulate the reverse translational research. For the pharmaceutical company, it seems very difficult to collect the uh, direct uh, clinical information or data uh, from the university hospitals. And we are uh, saying, you know, that this is a, a, we really need a mechanism like <coughs> a, a industry inside in university hospital. And uh, for that purpose, uh, we are using, uh, it's again, the money is very small, but uh, this is a 0.6 billion US dollar per year. And all 
uh, these budget uh, should be used for the reverse translational research uh, together with some specific field of uh, disease uh, uh, drug development, such as a rare disease, uh, which pharmaceutical company is uh, hardly uh, funding. So uh, we started up this. And also, uh, in most cases, uh, uh, the Japanese university hospitals are very, very behind to uh, establish, the, for example, the electric informed consent systems. Only a few uh, hospitals have it. And uh, uh, using our budget, uh, we will make sure to facilitate. And uh, uh, I think the, some of the hospitals uh, have a very interesting uh, proposal in which the, all the uh, electric health record is automatically uh, uh, introduced into the mirroring system uh, under anonymized condition. And uh, such uh, effort uh, might be very important for uh, accessing uh, the data for the uh, pharmaceutical company. And uh, we will uh, start up this budget uh, from this year and uh, continue at least 10 years. And after that, we will ask the money should be returned. And uh, this is a kind of government investment. I'd like to stop here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It was a very you know, uh, interesting example. You know, um, as Karan mentioned, that to fill the gap in uh, drug development, uh, we launched uh, in Brigham Cardiology the new research center in collaboration with COA, Japanese pharmaceutical company. And I'm wondering if uh, any of uh, you, know, uh, you uh, can share with us some other examples of uh, interdisciplinary collaboration with either government or universities. Uh, Dr. Brun, do you have any? Yeah, so, um, and actually I've been on a number of panels with Dr. Zumatsu actually on the, on the topic of open innovation in Japan. So I'm fairly passionate about this and um, I'd be happy to share kind of my story around this. Um, when, when I arrived in Japan uh, more than four years ago, what really struck me, you know, looking at the landscape that none of the multinationals actually have basic research anymore in Japan, brick and mortar basic research. Um, at the same time, if I look at the universities, it has top-notch basic research actually. And there's a real disconnect actually. Why is this not making into commercial application? And if you probe a little bit deeper, um, because there's cultural issues, you know, every university has very strong identities and uh, collaboration sometimes an issue, but it's really the lack of translational capabilities, yeah. actually, that's, that's a real issue. And we felt as a company, and quite probably one of the first companies to identify this, that there's actually an opportunity to bring these translational skills into Japan, because that's what we do as companies, basically. So we set up an open innovation center in, yeah. uh, in Osaka in 2014. Um, and the idea is really to be the bridge between academia and our scientists. And one component which is oftentimes underestimated is language, actually. Yes. Um, if you look at Kyoto University, I think 80% of publications are in Japanese. Of course, eventually they make it into US publications or into English publications, but if you really want to capture innovative ideas early on, you've got to have the capabilities to scan those. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the key capabilities we bring to this um, as well. Now, we set up uh, one collaboration, actually it's the most comprehensive that Bayer has worldwide with Kyoto University among a number of therapeutic um, areas and there's a number of projects ongoing. Um, but of course people always ask, so what's really coming out of this, right? And I want to share one specific uh, example which I think is quite exciting. Um, in December of uh, last year, Bayer announced a, a setup of a company with uh, Versen Ventures um, mm. called Blue Rock Therapeutics. Uh, it's a Series A financing of 225 million, from the biggest actually uh, in the biotech space, and it's focused on uh, stem cell therapies, um, specifically induced pluripotent therapies um, to actually cure diseases uh, where cell gener regeneration is an issue in cardiovascular and uh, in, in, in neuroscience, and actually cardiovascular is the first uh, pilot uh, to regenerate uh, myocardial cells actually after uh, uh, heart attacks. And um, the connection is, so it's a, it's a partnership, academia and industry, um, Canada, US, and Japan actually. And uh, 
the IP for the IPSC technology actually is licensed from uh, Professor Yamanaka, mm -hmm. who won a Nobel Prize uh, in 2012. So I think that's real, of course, no therapies has come out of that yet, but I think it's a great example where innovation out of Japan is leveraged in a global corporation. Yeah. So um, I want to share that. Great. Thank you. you know, um, I think uh, uh, Mr. Tanaka uh, mentioned that uh, uh, Mitsubishi Tanabe Pharma you know, has sent some investigators to U.S. cities. And also you, I think, talked about ecosystem. You know, uh, why are you talking about uh, the particular cities like Boston? Have you sent some people to Boston? Uh, good question. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet <laughs> means uh, actually uh, uh, our office uh, is located in Jadisti now. So, but uh, uh, we do are now thinking about moving the function into Boston. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, I believe you should consider Boston. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we will. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, now I like to change the gear a little bit. You know, I like us to talk about the different aspect of the attempt to use the innovative and disruptive technology to speed up the, the process of uh, drug uh, discovery research. And uh, Dr. Suematsu, so you are extremely interested in uh, medical IT, you know, for example, data sharing yeah. you know, uh, for patients. Um, <clears throat> Would you share with us some uh, ongoing efforts as okay. examples? <clears throat> uh, let me speak about a very small project again. Uh, that is called the Initiative on Rare and Undiagnosed Diseases, IRUD, IRAD we call. And within uh, one and a half years uh, recently, uh, we established the, the very big uh, uh, families registry, uh, which include uh, 2,300 different families uh, one of which family, uh, uh, such family members uh, suffered from some specific disease. And interestingly, uh, after starting this, uh, we successfully got the, the case matching because you know, the, if there is any ultra rare diseases, uh, the each individual physician has nothing to do to uh, give the, uh, receive the second same patients. But uh, after starting the data sharing system under the support of AMED, uh, we have already completed uh, uh, 12 case matches within the one and a half years among the uh, domestic uh, collaboration, which include uh, 230 uh, different hospitals, which include uni both university hospitals and uh, regional core hospitals, and some uh, private clinic. And this is great. And uh, furthermore, after uh, making the MOC with the NIH and other countries, we, uh, I'm very happy to see the case matching between Japan and the US, and Japan and Austria, and uh, Japan and some other country. It is ongoing. Uh, although we have no uh, strong uh, infrastructure for treatment yet, because as you know, the Japan is very weak in uh, promotion of the venture uh, business. But still, the accurate diagnosis is a number one priority uh, for medicine. So th in that sense, I think the, the IRAD project is going very well. And from this year, uh, we will start up, start up a, a second generation of IRAD. That is called the IRAD Beyond. And uh, we have a three beyond. The one is a beyond the genotyping. The diagnostic rate is about a 34 percentage in exome analysis right now. But we need to go forward. And the uh, second one is uh, beyond borders. And uh, we are establishing the, the, the global uh, database for the ultra rare diseases under collaboration with the NIH hospital under the support of the uh, Dr. Bill Gar. He's a very nice guy. And uh, we are uh, starting up uh, such collaboration. And the third one, beyond genotyping and then, uh, beyond the borders and uh, beyond the diagnosis. So we need to go forward for the therapeutics and the care or cure for these people. Great. Thank you. Uh, we, we still have uh, like roughly five minutes left. So now, now we have time to take uh, some questions from the audience. You know, this, the, I see one of, the, this is really interesting question. Now, and the, 
uh, are there any clinical trials to target aging as a disease indication? This is very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. the, the f first of all, no, I, I like to ask uh, either Dr. Broon or Tanaka uh, to see whether in any of you companies is running this kind of trial uh, targeting aging or planning to do so. Dr. Yeah. Broon? Yeah, I think at this point we don't, we have, have any specific uh, trials about aging population, but it's something I always found very interesting. That's something, because I was often asked in Japan, so what can Japan give to the world actually? Yeah. And I think what really Japan can contribute is, you know, how, how do you deal with this as a society actually? Because uh, I think you look at the US, it's a little bit different actually from an age profile. But if you look at Germany, where I'm originally from, it's a very similar age profile actually. Mm -hmm. in, in Germany you have, I think it's 24% of the population, about 65 already. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's around disease management actually. Mm -hmm. We can learn a lot, how do you deal with that as a society? So, but at least I think as a company, we don't do any specific trials in Japan around that. Okay. Um, you know, Dr. Suematsu, yes. you know, is there any the yeah. go government attempt? Uh, let me mention about the super aging project, uh, which started up from this uh, fiscal year. And uh, we are spending the, the tw uh, 22 uh, million uh, US dollars per year and uh, elongating for five years in which, uh, as you know, the, the Japanese people have some uh, uh, specific genotype, uh, such as ApoE4 haplotype, uh, which is critical for the Alzheimer's disease, as you know. And the uh, rate is uh, as many as 15 percentage of the whole population. But if you pay attention to the super aging cohort in our country, uh, whose age is over 100, we can see some very exceptional uh, actually, they are not patient. They are very healthy <laughs> and never uh, suffered from dementia. And they are just keeping a very nice uh, dementia score until the 110. And uh, we are calling, uh, we are dividing uh, these group into three. One is a young centenarians, <laughs> the 100 to 105, <laughs> and the semi super centenarian, it's 105 to 10 and the super centenarian, something like Yoda. <laughs> they are the 110. And uh, we are looking for why they can escape from this ApoE4 haplotype. That might uh, give us the very uh, crucial hint to overcome the dementia. That is ongoing. Okay. Great. <coughs> um, just, uh, okay, let me see. Just, just one last uh, question and a quick answer from uh, Mr. Kabata, probably. It, it's about uh, the, some unique situations in Japan related to um, regulation and price, pricing uh, of, uh, for new therapies. So you mentioned briefly about this, but could you explore a little bit more about it? Oh, okay, uh, thank you. So uh, I believe there are two aspects to scale up the new technology and the new development. The one aspect is, is uh, so, you know, uh, technology advancement itself. And the second aspect is uh, how the, those uh, technology uh, deliver to the uh, public general. So uh, as, as I said earlier, so I have worked for the Ministry of Health and uh, in charge of uh, making, uh, <coughs> reviewing a pricing system and <coughs> re regulation scheme. So uh, in that situation, the, so a uh, few, few years ago, the Japanese Ministry uh, Health Agency introduced the, you know, uh, so Sakigake program, called the Sakigake program. It's like uh, FDA's uh, fast track breaks design program to speed up the uh, development. And also we uh, uh, introduced uh, pricing, so trial, so, premium pricing system to uh, uh, Japanese so public health insurance reimbursement price. So to uh, make uh, Japanese market for uh, more attractive for uh, global industry. So pricing scheme and uh, uh, regulation fast track scheme is uh, very important for uh, rule making. Great, thank you. In closing, uh, I hope these discussions uh, have been uh, informative and useful for you. And uh, I'd like to thank all the panelists.
for your time and for sharing inf uh, important information uh, with us. For the audience, uh, thank you for coming for this early morning session. I hope you will enjoy the rest of the forum. Thank you. <laughs>